Good stuff. Good stuff. Man, two weeks ago I did a message on September, all the things that was going to happen in September. Um, I wanted to respond to it again and, and um, you know, do another little clip on it um, because the response that we got from out there was really amazing. The people that, you know, was looking at it and uh, some confirmation that I got back from people that saw it and um, but it was really good but I want to kind of pick up where I left off um, I told you guys two weeks ago about all the things that was coming down in September so um, with that being said last night about four o'clock in the morning um, let me just pray father in Jesus name Lord I just uh, Lord give us ears to hear father and eyes to see and Father, I ask, Lord, that you would, um, this message, Lord, would go out to those that are out there that need to hear it, Lord, because the times that we're coming into, Father, Lord, I just, uh, I pray that your spirit would move on it, Father, in Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. Um, yeah, Mike's on. So, um, first thing I want to tell you is, you know, you try to tell people things that are happening or things that are going on. And, you know, they don't understand. Amen. You know, they think you're crazy. They think, you know, uh, you know, they just don't understand. So what I got is um, to understand what is coming is actually a gift from God. Amen. You realize that, right? Yes, Amen. If you understand the times and the seasons that we're living in right now, if you know that we're about to enter into a time that, you know, we don't know what exactly lies ahead, but we know something is about to take place. The only reason that you know that is because God has given you a gift to see and hear. Because not everybody, even when you try to talk to people Amen. about things that are going on, they'll, they'll sit there and shake their head and everything, but you know, they turn around and forget what you told them and don't do anything. Amen. So the very reason that you're getting ready is because it was a gift from God given to you. Um, not everyone has been given this gift. Wow. That kind of changes some stuff right there. So it's a blessing that God awoke us up out of our sleep so that He could show us. Um, it says in Mark 8, verse uh, 18, Jesus talks to the Pharisees and Sadducees and He tells them, Having eyes to see, they see not, and ears to hear, and they hear not, but they think they know. You know, we don't need, you know, we can't let the warnings that, that is going forth right now fall on deaf ears. That's right. If anything happens right now, you know, and you're not prepared, it's your fault. It's your fault. Especially the people that are in this room. It's your fault. Because since January 14th, of, uh, the 1st of January of 2013, when the Lord you know, told me what he wanted me to start ministering on, preparing for the end time, that we would have an end time church. I started telling everybody, listen, make provision for what's coming. And in that time, we had a lot of people in church. And in that time, a lot of people left because of what I began to talk about and share the times that are coming and started talking about, you know, you really need to put some food away. You really need to get prepared you know, uh, physically and spiritually. We went over a, a message where, you know, what you eat today is going to be your life support for tomorrow. Amen. Right? And that was spiritually speaking. So if you're not eating spiritually, don't even worry about putting things away uh, physically because, you know, it's to no, no good. It ain't going right. to profit you or benefit you. Um, the other thing is if you have any questions, wait till I'm done. Okay? Please. Um, the other thing... Um, um, Having eyes to see, they see not, and ears to hear, they hear not. Mark 18, 8. Um, why do not, why, why don't they understand? Why doesn't people understand when you could take it and show it to them on, on, on the TV or show it to them on the computer? 
and l line up all of the evidence that it's obvious something is happening, something's going on, but yet they still don't listen. I mean, it's just like Noah. Noah was warning the people, warning the people. He's building a boat. He was warning them for a hundred years. I know it was 120 years and God flooded the earth. Uh, uh, it was 120 years. God said, yet in 120 years he's going to destroy the earth. Noah was 480 years old when God told him his sons was born when he was 500 and he began to build. He built for a hundred years and prophesied what was coming to all of them that was there and none heeded it. Not one Amen. heeded what uh, Noah was saying. One thing I want you to know about what we're in right now is we're in God's, not Israel's feast, we're in God's feast. Amen. You understand that? Amen. What that means is feast and festivals, it means the Moadim, God's Moadim, God's appointed times That's right. and seasons. It's not Israel's appointed times, though, yeah, it was given to Israel, but God gave Israel His appointed times. And those appointed times let us know things that God's going to do. Um, Moedim is God's feast, and it means to have it's His fixed time, or it's a fixed time in a season. That means God has got a fixed time in a season when He does something or when something is going to happen. It just don't happen by chance. He's got these feasts. We have the spring feast and we have the fall feast in which God moves in. That's when He moves. So we can be aware of things that are going on right now. There is something happening right now. Why? Because this is God's prophetic timeline. Amen. Beyond the shadow of a doubt. And I'm going to connect some dots with you that's going to blow your mind. Watch this. Um, the Moedim and Noah's seven-day warning. Do you know Noah knew before the flood what God was going to flood the earth seven days prior? Because he gathered on the ark for six days, and on the seventh day when he came in, God closed the door. Closed the door. Closed the door. Do you know the time and season that we're in right now? Closing the door. Wow. You go back and read when Noah entered the ark. In the second month on the 17th day, Noah entered the ark. That, is the, that was the beginning of... That was actually in September and October that Noah entered the ark and God closed the door. God had not yet changed the times yet. That's what was going on. So the Lord says, he talks about Noah's day and what was going on. So Noah had a warning as to what God was going to do. And when did God allow it to happen? It was right now. Knowing the times of our Lord, his Moadim is to understand what lies ahead. That's what I want to talk to you about. To understand the feasts and festivals of the Lord is to understand what lies ahead of you and I. Um, two weeks ago, I talked about September and all the things that was going on in September. Amen. There are so many, there are so many people now all over the world that are preparing, and the most of those that are preparing are people of faith. There's prophetic words that's been spoken. There's, you know, people from the secular, you know, and non-secular that are just letting us know, hey, something is coming, you better get ready. Because just like the days of Noah, with the closing of the door, there's a beating on that door. Open unto us, open unto us, but the door is closed. They were forewarned as to what was coming, but they were unprepared. Don't be foolish. And we're going to get into that. So what I want to talk to you about, this is what the Lord woke me up and this is what I heard. Four o'clock this morning I got up. Um, and just to cap on this really quick before I start reading this. September 13th is Rosh Hashanah. September 13th in the evening to 14th is Rosh Hashanah. I'm going to talk about that in a minute. 
uh, September 23rd to 24th is Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement. And the 28th is the super blood moon. Amen. The sign that God has given us in the heaven. Seven days, and then you have the last great day of the Feast of Tabernacles, which is Sukkot or Booth. I'm going to break these things down for you, and I'm going to connect some dots and show you how God is the same. That the time that we're living in right now is unprecedented. There are some things that are about to happen beyond the shadow of a doubt. And it's not going to, it's going to happen on God's appointed time. That's when He's going to allow it. And I'm going to tell you another thing about this. There's a few things that are out there I don't quite agree with. But I'm not going to get into that right now. But I want to tell you that, you know, um, whatever is going on right now, if it's the Shemitah year, you know, and if it's the Jubilee year, it doesn't matter. It, but it does matter. Meaning that Lucifer or Satan has to play by the same rules that God does. God conceals a thing, Lucifer conceals a thing. If he's going to do something, he's got he's to show it. You know, he, God doesn't do anything unless he reveals it unto his servants, the prophets. Well, guess what? Lucifer is bound by the same law that God is. So that's why in the Illuminati stuff out there, they're constantly revealing, revealing these hidden numbers and days, September 23rd and, you know, all of this. I mean, it's just inundated in, in the world today as to what's about to happen. It's in all of the movies. They're ex expecting something tragic to happen September 23rd and on. And I'm going to get into that in a little bit. But I want to just, um, let me get back to where I was. Um, if you're not, this is what the Lord spoke to me. This is how I got up, 4 o'clock in the morning. It's about 4.15. This is what I hear. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. If you're not prepared, you're too late. The 10 days of awe is upon us. Amen. You heard what I said? Come on. It's no joke. You go knocking at the door. Hey, Noah, let us in. Oh, no. It's too late. What do you mean? You got to let him in. I didn't see Noah. God closed the door. That's right. I seen when they came knocking on the door with Jesus. You know, let us in, let us into the marriage feast. Be gone, for I know you not. Come on. Many will come to me in that day and say, Lord, Lord, sorry. Oh, God would never do that. There were five wise and five foolish. That's right. They came and knocked on a door. Let us in, let us in. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two. You're too late. If you're not prepared, it's too late. The world is about to bust open, and if you're not prepared, it's too late. And the Lord said this to me, now is the time to finish up your physical preps and to be focused on my son, to be prepared spiritually to be prepared in your spirit, your soul, and your Amen. body and trust in Jesus no matter what happens. Amen. The ten days of all. Let me tell you, Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, and the Feast of Tabernacles. Rosh Hashanah, and I'm, I didn't even look in a book. I just started writing what the Lord told me to write. My wife even offered me a book today. I said, no, I don't want to see it. I've already wrote everything that God told me. I didn't, even, I didn't even open my Bible. He started speaking to me and I started writing. So this is what I wrote, Rosh Hashanah. And I left out a ton of stuff. I just wrote what he wanted me to put here. First thing I want you to know about Rosh Hashanah. Rosh, it just means the chief or the head of the new year. That's all it, it means. It was the day that God created everything. It was the day when Adam fell. Amen. The fall of the year. That's all I want you to then I'm gonna go from there. Rosh Hashanah. It's the chief of the head. It's a new year. It's 
so that we're entering into a new year right now. Right. It's the blowing of the so shofar, Amen. which means the sounding of the alarm. The alarm bells are ringing right now. It's the sounding of the alarm for trouble. It is the time of attack. Rosh Hashanah is the time of the attack. This is when Lucifer opened the gate and walked into the garden. The time of the attack. Wow. Watch. It's the time of infiltration. Are we being infiltrated right now? It's the time of opening of gates. That's what Lucifer did. It's the... It's, it's Rosh, it, it's the fall of man and creation right now. It's the time of death, both physically and spiritually. How's that? Well, they had to kill an animal, an innocent animal. And, and Adam died spiritually, physically and spiritually. That was a death that happened right now. It's a time of separation. It's a time of being cut off. It's a time of the loss of provision. They were put out of the garden. They couldn't eat off the trees anymore. It wasn't provided for them anymore. That's the time we're in. Why do you think war's crazy right now? Why do you think there's a mass exodus going on right now? Wow, this is the time of the first exodus. Adam was exodus, exited out of the garden. I'm going to connect dots for you. It's the loss of provision. It's the loss of sight. This is when they couldn't see anymore spiritually. They became blinded. Their eyes were open to God. Ate of the fruit... And then now that all they see is physically, they can't see spiritually no more. And spiritually is what is eternal. So the world is blinded to the eternal things. And the only reason that you understand and you get prepared is because God has given you insight. It's a gift that he's given you. And not everybody is going to hear it or see it. And that's why... They scoff at you and they make fun of you and they do all of these crazy things. That deal, we, when, when the Lord pulled us away from Christmas a couple of years ago, you ought to see the new Christmas movie coming out this year. It's Root Prick. Yeah. It's Root Prick, Crumpus, Hunched Over, Hoofs, yeah. Killing, Mass. It's a, it is, you got to see that thing. You got to see that movie trailer that's about to come out. We'll be lucky if we see a Christmas this year. A good Christmas. Well, is there any good Christmas? <laughs> you ought to see it. The very thing, when we opened up what Christmas was and told people what Santa was really all about, now is going to be manifested in a movie September December 6th, you're going to see it. It's the loss of sight. Rosh Hashanah, the chief or the head of the new year. It's a new time. It's a new beginning. It's also the fall of the year. This is the time the enemy attacked. He came in. This is the time he slipped into a skin. This is the time Adam lost the kingdom. This is the time that Eve was deceived. This is the time that she was uh, tempted to become like God. All of these things are happening. And all because of this, they became blind. That's Rosh Hashanah. Rosh Hashanah begins September 13th and 14th. Wow. That's what... That's what... At sunset. At sunset. That's... Today. That's what is... You know... And let me tell you something. You know... Why do you think everything is going on right now? 
Because this is when the enemy attacked before. They're saying the stock market's going to collapse. It, it is. They're saying there ain't going to be no food in the stores. And there ain't. They're saying plagues and all kind of stuff is about to go down. And it is. They are preparing. And if you can't see it, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You just haven't been given the gift. But don't be foolish. Be prepared. Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur. Yom Kippur is on the 24th, or sunset of the 23rd. Ten days later, the ten days of all. Repent. Amen. It's the call to repentance. Repent before you find yourself in, you know, before you get to Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement, or you're caught in these ten days of all. Ten, nine, eight. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. You're too late. Hey, you go to my church. Hey, pastor, pastor. You know, my, my family is hungry. You need to feed us. Sorry. Amen. Sorry. You might think that's hard. Come on. I'm just telling you what Jesus said. You didn't heed the warning. You didn't get prepared. And now you want to enter in. It's too late. Those who have ears, let them hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. That's right. Because if you think that's hard, that's what Jesus Christ done himself. Amen. God closed the door and said no more. And all the food was in the ark. Jesus wouldn't open up the door to the unwise that's right. virgins who didn't buy enough oil to keep them through the time that they was going through. Yes. Jesus said there would be pestilences and earthquakes and famines. And Jesus said his word that a righteous man sees a thing afar off and prepares himself. God is trying to prepare us not for me but for others. But I want you, I want to ask you a question. That after being warned for so long and making excuses for things that whether you, you know, why you're not prepared, I didn't have this and I didn't have that to get prepared. Once you get through all the lies, you realize that you could have. Do you know that you can get one year's food supply right now? One year with $200. One year. Just go to Sam's. Buy 200 pounds of rice, which is about $35. Oh, well, a 50-pound bag of rice is about 17 bucks. You get 200 pounds of rice for around 70 or so dollars, whatever it is. And you can get beans. You can get a year's supply of food for under, under $200. Don't tell me you don't have it. Come on. I'm telling you as my sheep, if you haven't started, you need to start now. You need to start now putting things away. Because you know how hard it's going to be when you don't have food to put in your family's mouth? Ooh. And I've been telling you for almost two years now to get prepared. And they're saying they're expecting the stock market to drop about 40% this month. That's a catastrophic, massive, unbelievable event. Amen.
The reason we put food away is so that we could feed others. Amen. That's what we're preparing for. Not to save this life, but so that we could use it to win people over. Amen. Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement. Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement. It's called the Day of Face to Face. That's right. It's called the Day of Face to Face. It's also called the Great Hidden Day. Why is this day hidden? Why is it called the hidden day? Isn't it funny, if Yom Kippur is the day of atonement where God atones for sins, then why did Jesus die on Passover? Because that was the hidden day. Come on. God was changing the times. That's when God told Moses no longer Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, and the Feast of Tabernacles, Sukkot Booth is going to be the beginning of years, but now... You know, Passover, Nisan is going to be the beginning. That is what was hidden from them. The great hidden day. So no, so Satan didn't know what was going on. If God would have brought a man on the day of atonement, Satan would have known what he was doing. But it was called the hidden day. And this day is hidden from a lot of people that's out there. This time of the year, yes, God created it perfect in beauty, but this is the time that Lucifer celebrates. This is the time he took the kingdom. So God changed the time. It's called the hidden day. The day of atonement. Yom Kippur means the day of atonement. The day that the priest would enter in behind the veil and go to God, meet him face to face, put the blood on the mercy seat. That's the day when Jesus Christ came Amen. And we beheld Him, His face, face to face. That hidden day He made the atonement is now revealed. He revealed it. The fall is the spring. It's the exact same thing. That's why on a golden candlestick, the menorah, there is a servant branch. That's right. And there's three that comes out on either side. The seven branch menorah. In the center is the servant. The oil goes in here and feeds all the other ones. Three on this side, three on this side. That's right. Passover, unleavened bread, first fruits, Pentecost, Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, the Feast of Tabernacles. The three are identical to the one in the middle. Wow. Amen. The Day of Atonement is the payment for sin. It's the time of retribution. Wow. The time of retribution. A nation going to be judged? It'll be at this time. It's called the Day of Covering. Wow. The enemy hides his plans. The enemy slipped into the dragon, into the serpent. Right? The hidden this is the day when God made an atonement, the day of covering, meaning when He covered, put skins on them. Right? Amen. This is the time uh, of the exodus from the garden. Isn't it funny you have an exodus in Egypt and you have an exodus in the beginning in the garden? It's the same day. Amen. Wow. And it's funny that Adam and Eve had to go and dwell in tents. That the word tent is tabernacle. God had to put skins on them. Jesus came and dwelt in a skin, tabernacled among us. The first exodus was from Eden. Wow. Spring feast, fall feast, identically the same. But the enemy gloats in this time. The enemy, this is when he does things. This is when he attacks. Why do you think there's a mass exodus going on from, you know, all of these 
Damascus from Syria into Europe and our borders are open and all these people are exiting all over. There's a mass transition going on. Why? Because there was a transition time back then. It's happening again. And war is everywhere. That's right. But we don't believe that the trucks will ever stop running down the interstate. Let me in. I don't have enough food. Come on. Come on, my brother. Wake up. It ain't by any coincidence that we move in at this time in a different dwelling. It was the it's an exodus from the garden. It was a day they lost their hearing. People don't want to hear right now what's coming. Man, I'm telling you, get ready now more than ever. They're saying beyond a shadow of a doubt the stock market is going to crash between now and, you know, October. Somewhere in October, 40%. What they're saying is China is going to fall first. Amen. The 23rd, they're saying 23rd and 24th, China's going to collapse. Then Hong Kong's going right behind it. Then the United States around the 28th is going to see about a 30 to 40% drop in the stock market. Amen. And you're not prepared. Did you not think this day would ever come? I hope to God it doesn't happen right now when you're not prepared. Amen, Lord. But I'll feed you. Because I'm your shepherd. And I love you. But after today, if you don't hear my words, what I'm telling you, and you don't go get prepared, Come on, I'm not your shepherd. Amen. Because my sheep hear my voice, and I listen to the, the Amen, shepherd up there. Amen. 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 It's a time of the loss of one's hearing. It's a time of being escorted out. A time that Adam and Eve was escorted out. This place isn't, you can't have this place anymore. The separation from God and Satan taken to kingdom. He gloats at this time. He makes wars at this time. He's got appointed times that he follows. You know what appointed time? This is the time he follows. This is when he does things. They always say at this time the stock market kind of goes down in September. This is his time. The fall of the year. It's Halloween. It's the, when they, people kill themselves. It's all of these times. This is his time. Amen. Our time is the beginning is Nissan. That's my Lord. But we can expect the enemy to do some things right now because we're at the end of it. We're at the beginning of the usher in, ushering in Amen. of, if you want to say the beginning of the birth pains. Isn't it crazy? I told you guys, the Lord is not going to return, I don't believe, until around the year 2032, 33. But yet, the Pope has a 2030 agenda. That's right. The 2020 agenda and a 2030. Why? Because he knows. The Bible says the enemy knows he has but a short time. He knows. We know the times are coming, but we still know we have a little bit to go. That's why they have a 2020 agenda. And that's why after that 2020, sustainable life, new world order, one world currency, they got a 2030 agenda, which I believe that's going to be midway through the trib. The 2030, when everything is, it all opens up. But the problem is surviving between now and then. Because if you think our open borders are just opened up because of, you know, they just open them and letting supposedly, you know, refugees come in? No, people. They're letting them in. They're going to arm them and they're going to send them out on us. Do you realize that? 
They're letting them in. They're arming them. And they're going to turn them loose on you and me. That's what they're doing. How do I know that? Because that's what they have done in every other country, every other place that's out there. They've funded them, supported them, created them, built them to tear something down so they can come in and set up their government. That's what they're doing. And if you don't believe that, I'm sorry. To be escorted out, it means provision is lost. And now, and now, at this time, um, provision, it's time of provision being lost. And now, it's the reliability of oneself. You have to provide for yourself. The government has been providing for us for a long time. We're looking at times that are coming ahead. We might have to provide for ourselves. It's going to take a community. It's going to take you and me. You want to know where I'm at right now? Building a family. That I can trust. That I can depend on. That I ain't got to worry about being stabbed in the back. Because you need me. And I need you. And it's going to take us coming together during those times. For encouraging and working together as a family to make it. Amen. No one man is an island. A man has to go to sleep. And if you realize the times that we're in right now, man, do whatever it is you can to begin to prepare. Do something. It's a day of darkness, a day of doom and gloom. But most of all, it's, but, but the worst of it all is the death of the innocent and the separation from God. That's what this day was, the death of the innocent and a separation from God. They was no longer in His presence, in His light, in His provision under his shadow of his wing, under his covering, under his hoopah. They were sent out. No shoes. He didn't make shoes for them. That's why he talked about the thorns. But, but, today was a day of hope. Because God had a plan. And that plan was Jesus Christ. God has a plan for everything that's going on right now. God has provision for those that have made themselves ready, for those who have prepared themselves, for those that have heeded the Word. Tabernacles, the 28th, Amen. the lunar eclipse, the lunar speaks of war. Man, they're talking about people, I mean, they are setting up refugee camps, tent cities all over the place right now. Tabernacles, Adam had to leave the garden at this time. He could no longer tabernacle and stay in the garden. Wow, how it all just lines up. A sukkuth or a booth. A tent or a tabernacle, which is, which is skin. A temporary dwelling. Man, we're in a temporary dwelling. We've just been moved out of our building. And now we're in a temporary dwelling. Lord, where are you taking us? The Feast of Tabernacles. In the Feast of Tabernacles, we are moving right now. Normally in the Feast of Tabernacles, you leave, you go off for seven days from other than the place that you're at. You go to Israel or go someplace. God is automatically ordaining our footsteps and moving us to where? I don't know. The cloud lifts. 
I'm gone. Have no idea. Where you going? I don't know. You got money when you get that? Nope. Don't have two nickels to rub together. Ten. He provided before. He'll provide again. He provided today. And he's provided for tomorrow. But I don't know what lies at the end of this month. Who knows? No telling where we'll be. It says, this time of tabernacles, listen to this. It's the Feast of Tabernacles, and Christ dwelt with us. He tabernacled Amen. among us in a skin, in a tent. That's right. Now watch this. In John chapter 1, Jesus dwelt. He tabernacled. He lived in a skin. This is the time that God put skins on Adam and Eve. You see, the times are the same. It says, and actually a tent, a sakuth or a booth, is actually called an ohil. O-H-E-L, an O-Hill, which means it, it was described as David's tabernacle. It was, it was uh, made of sticks or wood, like a, just a, a regular, almost kind of looked like an uh, Indian tent, kind of in, in a way. Made of wood, which speaks of humanity, the bones of humanity, wood. Overlaid with ram skins dyed red, which speaks of Christ. Overlaid with seal skins, which is actually badger skins, which speaks of it was uncomely to look upon. Je it speaks of Jesus' uncomeliness, so way back then there's still hope. It says, um, skins, it says, uh, it's also the Feast of Tabernacles is the day of being clothed by innocence. A lamb had to die. Adam and Eve got some skins. They, would, they was covered in some skins. Um, it's the day of God's grace being applied to our body, our house. Which is, listen to this. Rosh Hashanah is on the 13th, 14th. Yom Kippur is the 23rd, 24th. That's 10 days. Five days later is the Feast of Tabernacles. God clothes Adam and Eve with skins. Five. Why? Five is God's grace. His provision, His covering by His grace. The number five is God's grace. Um, it's also called uh, a day of wandering. Why is it a day of wandering? This is when Adam and Eve was put out. They're wandering around. No more house, no more home. They're looking for a place to stay. I'm showing you the connection between the two feasts. They're exactly the same. The day of wandering because of the exodus out of the garden. A mass exodus right now is going on in Europe. You know what Europe means? Europa, which means to have open eyes. That's right. Can you see what's happening right now? Europa, Europe. Do you have eyes to see and ears to hear? There's a mass migration going on right now. Thousands. Hundreds of thousands. Hundreds of thousands. You think it's by any coincidence it's happening right now? No, indeed not. Because I'm going to tell you something, just like I told you before, World War III is about to begin. I've said this seven years ago, eight years ago when I was teaching. No, it's longer than that now. It was seven years. It's about 12 years ago or whatever. It's a day of wandering, a day of wanting it's a day of wanting. Why is it a day of wanting? Or wanting something? Well, because, you know, you was just put out the garden. And, you know, you want to go in there and get something to eat. But your food supply has been cut off. Now you have to go and till the land. It's a day of wanting to go back. Wow, the children of Israel wanted to go back to Egypt. You think Adam and Eve wanted to go back into the garden where the provision was? You better believe it. A day of wishing. Wishing you would have listened to the warning that God had gave. You don't think Eve was like, man, I wish I would have listened and never ate from that tree? A day of wishing. It's a time that we're in right now. 
wishing you'd have listened to the warning of God, but you reasoned it away in your own mind, saying, This isn't the time. It's not yet. I'll not surely die. And then, reality. You turn on a TV and you see people killing themselves in a store to get the last little bit remaining food that's there. And you reasoned it away. And it's too late. It's called the day of closing the door. How do I know that? Because God closed the door on the gates of Eden when they were put out and placed a cherubim at the door, cherubims with a flaming sword. The day God closed the door in Noah's ark, this is the time. He closed the gates in Eden at this time. He closed the door on Noah's ark at this time. Right? CERN, what they're trying to do? Open the gates. Wow. They're trying to open the door that God closed. And they're going to do it. The day God closed the door in Noah's ark, He now tabernacled Noah is now tabernacling in a boat and he wandered around for a year and ten days. Wow. Adam put out the garden, doors closed, he wanders. Noah enters in a boat, right? It raises up and it wanders. The doors close and it wanders. Children of Israel, right? Go inside, put the blood on a thing, close the door, death angel passes over, they wander. Same the hidden day. God had to hide the day from Lucifer so he wouldn't know what he was doing. It's called, it's called the day of knocking at the door but not being allowed in. Noah, my kids... Open it. Just take my babies. Feed my babies. Take them. Open a window. Do you not think that Noah had family outside of the ark? Cousins or relatives that was in the world that had already contaminated themselves? Man, I'm your brother. Open the door. It's reality. It's called the day of knocking, but not being allowed in. Jesus warned us of this day in Matthew 25 to the ten virgins. Ten days of all, ten virgins. I hear you knocking, but you can't come in. How many is going to want to enter into the marriage feast in heaven, but is not going to be allowed to enter? The wise and the foolish. Knock, knock, knock. Open unto us. And the word the Lord wanted me to tell you was, did you listen? I'm not only talking to you guys, but I'm talking to you guys out there. You need to get prepared now. Amen. Because you don't want to hear from the other side of the door. I'm sorry, I can't open a door. Amen, brother. Hard message. But it's hard times Ooh, amen. that we're coming into. And I'm telling you, you need 
to get prepared now. Please. Please. I can't help you later. Come on. I can help you now. I can help you right now by telling you to get prepared. Amen. I can't help later. I'm one man. And I can only do what God tells me to do. Come on, brother. And I'm going to feed his sheep because I know what God has called. God said that he was going to bring orphans to us and I'm to take care of the orphans. And that's what we're going to do. So if you haven't prepared yet, you know, you need to be prepared that's right. more spiritually than anything. Amen. But if you was prepared spiritually, you'd be prepared physically because you would heed the warning that God has given. Amen. And there's so many people that are out there that are screaming it from the rooftops right now. Just regular people around the world or like something is not right. Amen. All the mainstream analysts are all saying the market is gone. It is going to fall at any time. That's right. We have a lot in this month that's coming. But the prediction that's being given, and I'm going to end with this, so you'll know, and I have no idea. God didn't tell me this. But what they're expecting... They're expecting on September 24th that China's stock market is going to take a massive fall. From that fall, it's going to affect Hong Kong because they are directly uh, tied in. And believe me, I've done my homework on this stuff. I understand uh, trends. I understand uh, uh, volumes. And volumes are coming down, but the money's going up. Something's wrong. When you got plenty of volume and money's up, well then it's okay. But when you got the volumes going down and the money's still skyrocketing up there, and you know some, they're even saying right now that oil. I heard yesterday that oil is going down to twenty dollars a barrel. Listen to me, that is not good. That's to crush the petrodollar. Amen. That's right. We're on the verge of a major. It's over. Amen. They're saying. The 23rd, China 24th is supposed to crash, then Hong Kong, and on the 28th, they're expecting the United States' is stock market to begin to take a massive crash. They're going to prop it up, they're saying, till after the Pope leaves. So, um, it's obvious that there's some major things going on. The only thing I can do and tell you guys is you need to be prepared physically and spiritually and mentally. And um, if, if you're not hearing this, you know, um, I'm sorry. Amen. But, so, I'm going to end. Father, in Jesus' name, Lord, I pray that this word, Father, will go out to those, Lord, that need to hear it, Father. And that their eyes would be open, Lord, to see the things that are going on around them, Lord, and with urgency, Father, they would begin to prepare. Father, I pray for those, Lord, who is... Um, I pray for all of us, Lord, that You would uh, make provision for us, Father. Lord, those that have not been able to, to prepare, that You would give them finances so that they can prepare and do something, Lord. Something is something. And Lord, we know that You're the God of multiplication, that whatever, as long as we begin to move and heed the warning, Father, that... You're there for us. And Father, you're the God of multiplication. And I understand, Lord, what your word said. Lord, when they fed the 5,000, five loaves and two fish, and the fragments that was taken up was 12 basketfuls. That's you, Lord. So I pray right now, Father, that you would continue to give us guidance and directions. Lord, I don't know where we're going, um, Father, but I know that our footsteps are ordered by you. I thank you for the provision that you made for us, Lord. Thank you for the building in, in this time that we can get together, Father. Lord, I ask that your blessings would be upon everybody that's here. And Father, I pray that nobody in here tonight is discouraged by what they heard, but Father, that it would give them an urgency to move and to prepare um, 
um, in whatever means they can, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen.